Island 98.5, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Big Quad's Backyard. We're just cruising on this Aloha Thursday. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome in the studio. I'm a massive, massive fan of this artist right here. He's holding down the great backbone of the Marley legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, Damien Jr. Gong Marley in the yo, studio. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> My man. Yo, yes, big. So what about you just went land and then you just decided to roll right over here and come chop it up with us guys? Yes, for sure. You know, we took a special trip here to come and visit the great place called Hawaii, which we know, you know, has always supported my music over the years. And we hear that they're already showing a lot of love to the new album. So we said, let's take a trip and come, you know, pay a visit. More love. Well, we greatly appreciate you being yeah, here, man. my brother. Now, uh, we're definitely going to talk about the new album. We've got some things we want to chat with you about. But uh, let's go ahead and take it back to 1996, my yes, father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was 13 years old, and this artist, artist drops on the scene by the name of Damien Jr. Gong Marley, yeah. and the album was Mr. Marley. Bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take us on that. How old were you when, uh, when the album dropped? Well, uh, when the album came out, I think I just turned 18 wow. at the time. But I had been working on it for a couple of years because I started working on it when I was still in high school, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, um, you know, with my bigger brother, Steven. And um, yeah, like I said, '96 when it came out, I must have been about 18. Mm -hmm. yeah. Steven, he featured on a lot of lot of tracks on that album for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We had a uh, Jacob Hemphill from Soldier in here, and we was talking about that album in particular. Yeah, and he was saying that one of his favorite songs on there was uh, "Love and Inity." Yeah, <laughs> big tune, brother. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so we both agreed on that. I was like, yeah, that's my jam right there. <laughs> And then uh, we'll fast forward to 2001, we had the Halfway Tree. Yes. Yeah? yeah. Sounded like you were having a lot of fun on all of these albums, man. Yeah, and each one of them is a growing experience. Um, with Mr. Marley, a lot of the lyrics and so forth was actually written by my brother, Steve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I said, again, at the time when I started working on that album, I was very young. You know what I mean? Halfway Tree was kind of like my coming of age album, where, you know, my lyrics on that album I wrote for myself. Mm -hmm. And it was really me starting to express myself as a young man now at that time, you know? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And then, uh, welcome to Jamra, 2005. Yeah, and that's, I guess you could say, my graduation. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we threw a party for that one, man. Yeah. That's it's still in rotation, you know? Yes. And then, of course, you linked up with, uh, you. obviously, you're a fan of the, the hip-hop scene as well, right? Yeah, man, for sure. So you linked up with Nas in 2010 for the Distant Relatives album. Yeah, well, originally I linked up with him on the Welcome to Jam Jamra album um, for a track named Road to Zion. Mm -hmm. And that's where the relationship kind of started musically. And then, like what you said, we, we got together again for the Distant Relatives project, which is really a project based around Africa, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And also the, the history that hip-hop and reggae has intertwined together, you know what I mean? You actually came down here with Nas and, and did a show, right? Yes, we did what? a few concerts here. Oh, man. Yeah. That was awesome, bro. Now let's uh, fast forward to today. New album drop, Stony Hill. Yeah, yeah. Big album, man. I know you got a lot of love into that album. And uh, we know that... Kings are usually born on uh, July 21st, <laughs> right? So that was when the album dropped, and yeah. that's also your birthday, brother. So yeah. happy belated birthday. Thank you very much, man. Thank yeah, you. big tune, man. Take us down a trip on that. Uh, 18 tracks featured on the album. Yeah. Uh, a lot of artists nowadays who release album, they, they don't, usually don't put that many on there. Yeah. So uh, how how did you select it down to 18, and did you have more tracks you wanted to put on? Yeah, we had some more tracks that didn't make the album. Um, originally, I didn't intend for it to have so many. Mm -hmm. You know, it w was really my intention to have a lot less. But really, what happened is it, it became difficult to try to get rid of tracks. Mm -hmm. We became so emotionally attached to the music that to cut a track was like one of the hardest things to do. Right. So we did cut some tracks, but uh, you know, the, the least that we could cut it down to was the 18 that we have put out. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Now, besides uh, some fun songs like Medication and whatnot that's on there, it sounds like when I'm listening to the whole album, this one, you really wanted to portray a message in this one. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what, what was that message? Well, it's a message of hope. I mean, I can't really say that there's any one specific message because, of course, each individual song is dealing with a different topic mm -hmm. still. But it's really a message of hope, um, a message of forgiving. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of forgiveness on the album in terms of not trying to act like you're too perfect, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And no, none of us are, so there's a lot of forgiving on the album. Um, but that, that would be probably two of the main themes, I think, you know? Now, another thing I noticed on here, there's not very many features on this album. No. Which are rare, because mm -hmm. a lot of artists nowadays, when they're um, putting out albums, they want everybody on, you know? Yeah. They want all the friends and people they're trying to bring up. Um, is there a reason for that? We didn't do it on purpose. We just, again, a lot of the times when we do collaborations, the music is really what dictates mm -hmm. who we collaborate with. Right. And it just ended up naturally coming out this way, but I don't really mind because a lot of my previous, more recent releases have been collaboration projects. Like right. you mentioned, the album with Nas, 
I did another album called Super Heavy, which was a collaborative album also. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I didn't mind basically showcasing just myself as as much as I do this time around. Just doing you on there, eh? yeah. No, um, did you have any other people producing the album as well, or how many tracks on there did you actually produce? Yeah, well, I produced quite a bit of of the tracks. Um, also we have, of course, my brother Steve. Right. Um, we have. Andrew Blacks and Steve McGregor were both uh, very popular producers in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And we also did some work with um, Aston Barrett Jr. Mm -hmm. That's family man, family man who plays the bass for my father. Who, you know, Whalers, oh, wow. the original Whalers family man. His son did, did some production. And of course, my musicians that I work with contributed mm -hmm. in my band. Yeah. Nice, man. Well, beautiful album, my brother. I absolutely love it. Thank you. For real. Now, uh, let's talk about medication, man. Of course, inspired by the herb, yeah. the pakalolo, yeah. the chief, the crip. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how do you feel about the legalization, uh, you know, now that it's being legalized all over the place, especially here? You know, I don't know if you realize that they started to do that down here as well. That's wonderful. But um, as far as you guys been pushing for it in the Jamaican culture and you guys fought for it from the beginning, I mean, how, do, how does it feel now? It feels good. I mean, this is what we've been fighting for is for it to become legal. And there's been very, you know, many different benefits, you know, I mean, of it becoming legal. One, of course, is obviously that we don't have to worry about risking our freedom right. to, to enjoy the herb. And that goes without saying that that's a big stress off of our shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also the, the, the research that's being done on the medical side, which is something that we're talking a lot about of recently. And which is some medication is also trying to highlight, which is the benefits that, that marijuana is showing in terms of. Um, aiding people with, with serious illnesses mm -hmm. as a medicine, you know what I mean? So the more it becomes legal is the more real scientific research that's being done. And, and that is in itself is, is wonderful on behalf of human humanity, whether or not you smoke it or, or you know, use it as a spiritual sacrament, it can benefit all of us as a medicine, right. you know? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie, my brother. You look incredibly healthy, bro. Thank you. So it's working for you. you <laughs> Thank <know>? you. <laughs> uh, Thank that's going to take me to my next question, man. So many have, have risked their lives, you know, even end up in jail and uh, are actually right now currently doing years for pakalolo or marijuana, you know, the herb. And recently you just purchased a prison with some partners, correct? Well, we purchased a building that was formerly a prison. <laughs> right, you right, You know what right. I mean? Um, yes. And we, now it's been a huge grow operation. Right? Yes, yes. Let, which, let, tell me about that. Well, I mean, like we said, um, some partners that we, you know, some people that we partnered up with were looking for a, a space to grow some herb. Mm -hmm. And that was just another building that was available on the real estate market that just so happened to have been a prison before. So it wasn't really that we had the intention to go out and look for a prison but it was available and it was the right amount of square footage, you know what I mean? Right. So, of course, it goes without saying that it's a beautiful story to know that people were once locked up there for herb and now we're able to grow herb there. You know what I mean? That's a beautiful turnaround and, and of course, something that highlights again, just you know, builds awareness on, on the movement of what's going on with the legalization of herb. Absolutely, man. Yeah. I should hire some of those brothers to come work in there too, huh? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man, that's an awesome deal. So, uh, all right, now, you just came off of a tour in Africa. Yeah. All right. Um, how was that? That was great. That was really great. It was my third time visiting the continent, but the first time that I was able to go to so many different countries at once, you know. Mm -hmm. We did six shows in all, um, visited Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa, and Mauritius and Reunion Island. Mm -hmm. And what I'm very proud about on that trip is the fact that we're able to do so many dates at once because most of the times when people go to Africa to perform, they'll just do one show or visit one country right. and, and leave, you know? And it's a far way to go, you know what I mean? Um, so it, it was, I'm proud of the fact that we're able to string you know, a few dates together and hope that it encourages more of that touring mm -hmm. to happen there. Did it feel more righteous doing shows over there? Like, was there a different type of energy? Doing it, shows. Uh, it, it felt satisfying in that I've done a lot of music that pays homage to Africa. Mm -hmm. And a lot of music that I've released recently, I, hadn't, I haven't been there since releasing the music. You know what I mean? So I felt it was only right to actually go to Africa. You know what I mean? You have to, you have to walk the walk, you know? See so the it, homeland. Yeah. yeah so right, it was right. satisfying in that, in that sense. All right. Now, uh, 
Now, you just wrapped up that tour in Africa, and you recently just announced the uh, Stony Hill U.S. Tour. Going to be kicking off in September. We'll have you down here yeah. on the 29th at the Blaisdell. Can't yeah. wait for that, yeah, man. Yeah, we should yeah. be in the front row. You know? <laughs> I might be blocking some views, my brother, but <laughs> yeah, we're going to make it happen, yeah. man. So uh, tell us about that. Of course, details are at DamienMarley.com for anybody that want to go check that out. Uh, this tour, where is it taking us? It's taking us all over the states. As you say, we're coming to Hawaii, um, but, you know, from, from coast to coast, we're going all over America, really. Um, again, in in you know the movements are promoting the album, and of course, I'm excited because it's be the first time performing a lot of these songs live. Mm -hmm. It'll be a brand new set as opposed to what we've been doing for the last few years. So I'm really looking forward to you know having some fun playing some new music. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many shows in all? How much show? About 30, 30, 30 something. Wow. Yeah. That's a good amount, man. How's yeah, it feel man. being on the road? I mean, do you get your rest time? What What do you like to do to kind of take you to that place to just relax in between this but busy... Sometimes the traveling road. can get rough. Um, I really enjoy being on stage, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that, that at the end of the day, kind of, you know, regardless of how rough the day might have been traveling-wise, the, the show makes the day complete, the day worth it, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Now, uh, give me a couple songs that Damian Marley has on his iPod, man. <laughs> Some that, that you, it could be anything, man. Anyway, Stony Hill anyway. album straight up right now. <laughs> yeah. All the way, you guys. Yes, you know, what? I, I've been listening to Chronic's new album also. Uh -huh. I, I like, I like. You know, he put a nice album together. Um, it's a little different, huh? Uh, yeah, it's different, yeah. and he's very experimental with a lot of the vocal sounds and stuff. Harmonies are are pretty cool that he did. You know, um, I've been listening to Jay Z's new album also, which I'm featured on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 But <laughs> but I listening to that also, you know. It's just Jay Z. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know. Oh man, dude! Thank you so much for stopping by today. Had a blast. Uh, last but not least, every time like Jay Boog or West Staffers in the studio, and we're talking story and they're talking about this boat cruise. Yeah. That that for some reason I can't find myself on yet, but I like to. And now that you're here, <laughs> you know what I mean. What after <laughs> the welcome to Jam Rock Boat Cruise, yeah. my man. Tell me about the experience and how much fun it is putting that together. Well, it's great. I mean, I'm very proud of that venture. I mean, it's a it's a great pedestal for reggae music as a genre. Um, it's like five days, five nights of a reggae festival on the sea, where you're surrounded by the culture, you're surrounded by the musicians, by the artists. You know what I mean? The whole the the business fraternity of reggae music all comes out. We're all mm -hmm. there together, you know what I mean. And and you get to you get to go to Jamaica and and spend a, you know a few days in Jamaica, two days in Jamaica. You get to come off the boat and go look around and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's a great it's a great experience. So when is our next one happening? And uh, mm -hmm. some of the artists that are featured on there. November is the next one. Um, some of the artists that we have would be like Sizzla, Jacques Cure, nice. um, Richie Spice. Uh, you know, who else do we have this year? Coco T. Bound to Killer. We have loads of people, you know what I mean? You can, so, check, it, you can check it out at the website, welcome to jamrockreggaecruise.com. Welcome to jamrockreggaecruise.com. Yeah. I'm going to get some tickets, my brother. You need an MC or something. Yeah, yeah man. Free, you know, bodyguard or Yeah, whatever. I was just about to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, bodyguard, everybody yeah. MC, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, Damien, I'm a massive fan, bro. I remember talking story with you behind the Waikiki show when you were down here on uh, one of your concerts. It was just me and you, and we was kicking it. And uh, I was like, the band, I think they was just packing up the instruments or something from sound check. And I was like, uh, hey, were you waiting for your limo or something? And you you kind of said, no, man, uh, I don't, don't like the limo. You know, I'd rather take a bus. So mm. Instead of, uh, I'd rather not fly, fly a plane, but I'd rather take a train. Yeah. And then the band came out, and I don't know if you remember this. There was like this 1996 Honda Civic car that was in the corner, and it was thrown like red, yellow, green paint on top with the Star of David. And you guys actually all piled into that car. <laughs> I don't remember. You don't remember that? No, no. I actually got a picture, bro. I got a picture. Then you guys yeah. started, took off driving down the street of Waikiki, man. One of my most memorable moments. Nice. And I share the nice. story all the time. Nice, nice. Super humble beginnings, and uh, we're definitely thankful for you coming in the studio and stopping by showing us some love today. Thank you today. for having me, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, Damien Jr. Gong Marley, please follow him on all of his social networks and uh, see what he's up to, and we'll see you at the show September 29th, my brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Aloha.